Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Cassandra and if you are new here, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. On this channel, we try to share new inspiration and DIYs on a budget. Okay, so I've got something really fun I want to share with you guys. This is a shelf slash um, sign slash whether you want it to be a stocking holder, a key holder. It's something that could stay up and be used all year round. So to start with, I want to get two pieces of wood, um, and I'm using plywood, and since it is a lighter wood, I'm going to use some of the wood stain, and I'm going to cover both pieces lightly. Um, I know it's a very dark stain, but as everybody knows, when it dries, it's not normally as dark, so if you want it to be darker, of course, you may have to add a couple more coats. Now, this step in our whole process is probably going to be the longest. Um, you want to make sure that you are allowing enough time for the stain to completely dry in between your coats or even if you're just going to use one coat, make sure it dries. I definitely um, suggest following whatever the directions stay on the back of it. I like to use the gel stain. I, I like the, the finish of it. Um, but just make sure you let it dry. So I tend to stain my signs and then make sure everything is covered and I've you know got everything nice and good and then I set it aside for 24 to 48 hours just to make sure that it is completely dried so you might not have to do it that long just follow the directions on the back of your you know your jar or whatever type of stain that you're using okay so the next step is well, before we start painting it white or with white chalk paint, I'm going to um, go ahead and actually sand it down. Somehow I skipped this part in here, but I took a sanding block from Dollar Tree and I just went over it lightly and then I used a damp cloth and then just lightly went over to get the sand, the sanding dust off. Um, now I am using chalk paint. So the goal of what I'm trying to do is I wanted to create kind of a white wash using the chalk paint. I wanted to make sure that I had a lot of the darker stain still coming through while giving it a fresh white chalk paint over top. So, and you'll see, I went ahead and I added a little bit of water because my chalk paint was a little bit thicker, which is, I mean, it's good, but I wanted it to be a little bit thinner. So I added just a little bit of water, as you see here, and I just made sure I mixed it in. Now, if you want it to be a little bit, um, how do I want to say this? If you want the, the darker wood finish to come through, then you're going to want to make sure that you are using a dry brush stroke method. So you should not have much on your brush. Um, make sure it's slightly dry with the chalk paint or whatever paint it is that you're using. Now, the person that wanted this sign, they actually did want more of the white um, to kind of show through, still allowing the darker stain to come through on parts of it. So on Cricut Design Space, I went ahead and wrote, this is us. And then, of course, I used my Cricut and the vinyl to cut it out. And I'm using permanent vinyl. Now, if you do not have some type of Cricut or silhouette type of machine, you can always use a stencil. That would work just as well. And that's actually what I used to use prior to me getting the Cricut machine. Another tip, um, you can always go onto Google or the internet and then just type in whatever wording you want and then put SVG for free behind it. And there's a lot of different sites that will actually allow you to have this template or templates like this for free. Now I'm just weeding out the vinyl so that I can get the sign started. I didn't want to show too much of this because this is 
a little bit longer process and I'm sure you guys know how to weed out vinyl. If you're using um, vinyl, um, you just go ahead and, of course, use your transfer tape. Make sure that you have it centered and then go ahead and transfer your design. Now, as you'll see, the further on I kind of go through the steps, one of my reasons of making this sign is because I had somebody who wanted a stocking sign for Christmas, but they also wanted a piece that they could keep up all year round. So this was kind of like the perfect kind of decor to their house, something that would be great all year round, but also could be used for the holidays, such as hanging their stockings. And this is a piece that you can personalize. If you are somebody that wants to start actually maybe selling signs, this is a really good piece to kind of have in your portfolio, a piece that, you know, would get probably a lot of hits. You could do it different ways. You can personalize it or you can make it a general saying, this is us without the names and just put maybe our life, our love, our home, something fun and light. Um, but also just kind of a universal piece. Or as you can see what I'm doing, I actually personalized it for my customer. Okay, so right now what I've got was these little cup hangers and you can find it at Lowe's, you can find them at pretty much anywhere, including like Walmart. So I just took a drill bit and then I, using my smallest drill bit, I actually drilled holes in where I wanted them to place and then I just screwed the cup holders in. Now I did go back in later and add a, um, a glue that would kind of keep them, you know, in place and wouldn't move because as I said, they wanted to use this as a stocking sign as well as maybe a keychain sign or something along that line where it's going to have to hold a little bit of weight. Now these two I actually got from Walmart and I paid under $4 for them, but they have a huge selection, different sizes, different designs, and different colors. But I needed these so that I could turn my sign into a shelf. Now you can just place them where you want them. Um, and then I like to actually take a pencil and then just kind of mark exactly where I'm going to pre-drill my holes. I think that pre-drilling is a step that is, I believe, needed, especially when you're using plywood. It ensures that you're not going to split your wood when you're adding your screws.
I know some of these little signs um, seem a little challenging or daunting. Don't be afraid. I'm telling you, they're so simple and so easy to make. Um, just a couple screws, a couple pieces of hardware, and a couple pieces of wood. And I'm telling you, you can create some beautiful pieces. If you're somebody that maybe wants to start a little side business or maybe don't know what to get somebody for a birthday or a Christmas present, this is something that would be beautiful. I, I personally would love to receive something like this. Matter of fact, like I said, I made this for somebody else, but I'm in the process of making one for my own house because I loved it so much. Okay, y'all, so for this one right here, I actually took some of my Cricut iron-on sheets and I cut out a few stars. Now, the part where it says, this is us, I did use permanent vinyl, but I wanted to show you that you could also do iron-ons and it works just as well. So I just cut out a few little stars and I'm just gonna place them on. This sign, I kind of wanted it to be simple, um, so I, stained the wood already and had already started it and then midway I'm like well you know what let me just show you the rest of the project so hopefully you like half of the project that I'm doing with y'all so those of you who may not know and have a Cricut or a die cutting machine you can actually use iron-on products, <clears throat> most of them, on wood. Um, so for this project, as you see, I'm just using my house iron. I know that there's some of us that, including me, who do not have the actual Cricut irons. Um, but this works just as well. You might have to leave it on a little bit longer, but it works. So I have it on the highest setting, and I just use the paper I put it down over top of it to protect it and just do my iron on Now, I know you probably couldn't see what that says, um, but that was my Waverly's Chalk Paint in Merlet, which is kind of like a deep burgundy color, which matched my stars that I had ironed on perfectly. So I'm going to be adding knobs. I actually like to add knobs to some of my signs because I feel like it takes um, something that is, you know, meant as a decor piece and it can become multi-purpose. You could use it for multiple things. So I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of color. Now these knobs, I bought these in bulk from Amazon um, a couple months ago when I had made my, I think it was my very first video on YouTube and they were for my stocking signs um, that I was doing for kind of my Christmas stocking signs. But I thought it would be something that I could actually add to this or other pieces and it would look really good. So you want to lay them out and kind of place, you know, where you want them to go. If you want, you can mark them just so that you know. I kind of just eyeball. I, I've done them for a while, so I just kind of eyeball where I want them. And then you're going to want to pre-drill it. If you do not have a drill and you cannot pre-drill it, that's fine. Um, but if you're going to drill them, 
or drill the screws in, I think that you should probably pre-drill the hole so that you do not like actually split the wood. This piece right here is optional for this part, but on the back of them, when I did drill it through, I see that there was chips kind of on the pieces of wood. So I like to kind of make sure it's a smooth surface so that nobody gets splinters and it just makes your piece a, a little bit more professional. So all we're going to do is flip that bad boy over and then start screwing all our knobs. It really is that simple. I know that these signs may seem like, you know, that's just not something that you could do, but anybody can do them. They are so easy, so simple. It does take a little bit of practice. I think that once you've done one or two of them and you get your mind thinking or you get on Pinterest and you look at some of the little things that you see on there or even maybe go onto the websites and see some of these ones that are being sold for fifty sixty dollars look at the designs you don't have to like actually mock it to a T but you can recreate your own now one step that I like to do kind of my finishing touch um, would be adding a sealant for me for this sign because it will be inside I'm just going to put two coats of Mod Podge over it um, and then I also make sure that I go over the knobs because I did paint the knobs so I want to make sure that the paint let's say they're hanging something on it I want to make sure that the paint does not rub off over time. So this is actually the final step. I should have said that before I said the last part of it. But in order to hang it, you will need something to hang on the back. Now, I know that there are some people that do not like to hang stuff in their walls. So if you are gifting this to somebody, kind of just see what their preference is. You might want to add some of those little stickies that you get um, where they don't have to put the holes in the wall. But for this one, I am going to add a hanger on the back. Um, so I just took one of the hangers and then added two little nails to it. Easy peasy. So there is sign number two. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment, hit that like button. I hope that I can help inspire you to get out there and create your own. Until next time, happy crafting y'all.